Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We have with us State Senator Mark Pody, Republican from Lebanon. He is here as the legislature is literally on a break. Uh, he will go back up to the legislature tonight, and they may finish for the entire year tonight, or maybe uh, tomorrow. We've been talking about what's going on up there tonight, um, some of the last minute bills, but in, in large part about abortion. Yes. Um, there's no. I've done this show so many times. <laughs> it's so it's very hard to find common ground. Uh, the argument that I hear most often is is why is it that men are making this decision about women's bodies? Um, you know, you you feel strongly, passionately, in your heart a certain way, but it's not you in the end that's going to have to carry this baby for nine months, and so. When you hear that, what, what, what do you say? Uh, and Van, I, I'm very sensitive to this, that um, not only am I asking the mother to, to carry this baby for the term, and then to have the baby, and then what are we gonna do with that baby once it's born? Um, is the mother gonna keep it? Maybe she has no means of keeping it. Maybe there's no, no father in the picture, or for whatever reason, she doesn't have the financial means, or if she gives it up to adoption. Um, who's gonna educate this child? Who's gonna feed this child? And here I am, the one fighting to keep it, and I can't just say, well, there you go, good luck. Um, you know, so I wanna make sure that we're sensitive to that as well, that if somebody doesn't have an abortion, that there's options for them. Uh, I've got 12 grandchildren myself. Most of them are adopted and because we want to find a good way to help people that are not in a position to have and care for those, those children. But we're trying to make it our state to be one of the most friendly adoption states in, in the nation. We want the um, babies to have a good home. And if the mother decides to keep that baby, we want to come alongside that mother and say, what do we got to do with programs that can make you uh, more comfortable in raising that baby? How can we help educate that baby? How can we help do things to, to come alongside you? And, you know, it, we can't just say, go get a job, leave the baby at home, and, and that doesn't work either. We want to find something that makes sense. Um, that we acknowledge and accept the fact that you're going to need help from time to time and, and step in to do that. You said at one point you hope to find common ground and I've done this issue for long enough I just don't see how there is common ground. So how do you how do you do it? How, how is there any hope that there's common ground or is it just constantly this is one of the wedge issues of of all time. Yeah. Can we ever find common ground or will it just remain a wedge issue that just goes back and forth and the political wins I guess that's my question. And, and Ben, I hope not. I hope that there's going to be a point in time that um, we can continue to find a way to, to do this. Um, to turn around and say, you know what, maybe the mother doesn't want to go through this the whole time. Is there is there a way that we can say, um, if, okay, if you're going to have an abortion, can we, can we make it where it's a live abortion, okay, or a live birth, and instead of just throwing that feed us the way that we can say, all right, we're going to take that and give it to parents that want to have somebody. So instead of just saying, okay, you're going to have an abortion, it's, it's here, you no longer want anything to do with that, that fetus or that child, can we just give it to somebody that does? You know, how can that work out? And I think that as we have more and more science and medical advancements are coming more and more, babies are living longer at, uh, when they're premature, there might be a point in time that, that something like that will happen as well. Not my best option, but I am trying to, again, find what can we do? How can we reach out to say there might be hope in the end? Because my goal is to, to bring people together and, and to find a way to, um, to love these children and to protect them. You said Tennessee used to be a destination state, yes. but not anymore, destination for abortions. Yes. So how do we how do we rate as far as the states around us? Let's take, you know, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. How 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 are we? Okay. I think we're doing better than what we were and and so the other states are doing things as well. I, I know Every single state's under challenge. When we pass a law, and even some of the laws that we pass today will probably be challenged. And, and I'm sure the other side will kind of pick and choose and say, what's the most likely challenge that we can put and what's the most likely state that we can put in? Here in Tennessee, we try and watch what happens in other states and what lawsuits they've gone through so we don't have to go through the same lawsuits. That if they specifically won a lawsuit based on that bill um, and, and, and the people that put it forward lost, no sense us going through that expense to do it. You know, I know that like the right to life people, they fund so many of these things, we don't want to put them in a position where they got to fund um, 
something to protect it when we might, we know that we might lose. And sometimes they tell me, Mark, you're too far. You are too far. Don't do this where you're going to put us in a bad position. Was that some of the concern with the heartbeat bill? Absolutely. They thought that's too far. It's going to be a costly legal battle and, yes. and, and it won't we won't win. They, that's exactly what they felt. So um, in this case, and that's why I'm trying to say, let's find where we can settle in and get something and, and move forward. And so do you feel it's going to be a legal battle, but so what? Let's have the battle. Do you ever feel that? Um, yes, I do. If, if this is a life, at what point do I say that that life's not worth fighting for? And we, we have that question a lot, you know, of saying, how much is too much to spend on that one life? So I don't mind um, doing what I think is a good, reasonable way to see what we can't do to, to move the ball forward. I notice some of these bills, they are similar. They come up in state after state after state. How, how does that happen? Is it, is there uh, some sort of uniformity in bills that are brought up in more than one place? You know, and where, where do they come from? How, how does that happen? Right. So I'm a member of several um, legislative organizations across the country, and, and so I get what's happening in their states, and I read them. So I say, oh, okay, Indiana's trying this, Texas trying that, uh, and it'll post that this one passed, but it hit that lawsuit. And so I try and actually read those. Now, I don't read all the uh, bills from all the states, but I do the ones that I'm most passionate about, I try and keep up with those. So I know what's going on in Kansas, or I know what's going on in other states. And if I see it's a dead end, then I don't want to carry that in Tennessee. But if I say, hey, that went through, and a lawsuit was challenged, and it seemed to have a good success there, um, I don't mind carrying it in Tennessee. The heartbeat bill, where did that come from? All right, so that one actually came from um, Senator Beavers, carried that bill originally. So she wrote that bill last year. And then when she stepped down to run for governor, that was left on the Senate side for me to pick up when I got here. So I'm not sure where the where the genesis of that started, but I got it when I was elected um, last year and it was on the desk. So I just picked it up and went from there. And what do you see coming down the pike? What do you see next year? Is there anything you would like to have happen, or is there anything you feel like will happen? Kind of what's, what's coming down the pike? Uh, you know, I don't have a bill that I'm saying, boy, I want to do this for next year. Uh, I want to see we've got a new governor coming, you know, and we don't know who that may be. And whoever that governor is, they might have a, a direction that they're saying, we would like to go along this direction. If we can have the gubernatorial support, I want to see where they're going to fall. And if they're going to fall in here, uh, it's going to definitely help. But if they're going to say, you know what, this is not a program that we're going to be interested in, uh, then we don't need to be going against the governor at the same time as, as everything else. So we want to kind of see what's going to be the, the direction that our next governor is going to be going at the same time. But I can tell you, we're going to try and do something, just don't know what it's going to be yet. Because there's something every year. Yes. yes. And has that been the case for the last whatever years there's yep. been something 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 every year uh, that we would sit down there's a lot of pro-life very strong um people in the legislature right now and they're very passionate about it um, and if i see that somebody else has something i don't need to carry it you know i mean if they, if they want to be carrying the ball that time then that's fine um, i just need to co-sponsor and sign on and help in committee wherever i can um, so we all don't have to carry the same bill all right why don't we take a break we'll come back uh, continue our discussion. We'll kind of shift it toward just kind of again what's going on tonight in the legislature and when things may wrap up. Take a break. Be back right after this. The Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at